What's going on everybody, Josh Pocock here, and in today's video, we are going to be taking another look at Open Interpreter, looking at some of the tests and best use cases you can actually use this tool for, as well as we're going to be testing out Open Interpreter OS. Open Interpreter operating system basically allowing it to completely control your computer with AI. That's right, you can do pretty much anything. Let's dive right into it. All right, guys, so I did a video yesterday. I'll link it down below. Basically, just an introduction to Open Interpreter, and we'll go over some brief things talking about how to set it up very quickly, very easy to do. And then we're going to kind of test and push it to some of its limits and see how it actually does. Okay. Because yesterday I mentioned that, you know, there is an Open Interpreter OS mode, and a lot of you were asking to actually do a video on it. So that's what we're going to do here today. And yeah, so yesterday, just to kind of sum up for people who didn't see that video, um, it was, we basically tested Open Interpreter and it worked fairly well um, and better than a lot of the other agent models that I have personally uh, used in the past. So we're going to go ahead and use it as well. So there is, so this is kind of cool. They are uh, at least like very soon going to be releasing a desktop app. Um, there is early access. I don't have it at the moment. I did apply for it, but. Anyways, so the link for the GitHub repo as well as the docs will be down below. Open Interpreter has been around for quite a while now. Um, and they do have, let's see, 52K stars on GitHub. So pretty established project and very simple to install. All you, all you literally do is just run uh, the command pip install open interpreter in your terminal. So if I would go to my terminal here, I would just run that command like so boom which i already i'm not going to run just because i already have it installed but once you run that it would install it okay once you do that all you do is just simply run interpreter all right yes literally just two commands and you can get up and running now within the doc section um i'll go over some brief things for you guys so you guys can kind of know where to look for what you want to do with open interpreter because there's a lot of stuff you can do with it so here um, it talks about the different ways to install it or set it up so if you want to do local mode um, you can run this command we're going to run this command shortly os mode um, and then it explains what os mode is essentially allowing you to here i'll quickly read it os mode is highly experimental mode that allows open interpreter to control uh, the operating system visually through the mouse and keyboard it provides a multimodal llm like gpt4 vision with the necessary tools to capture screenshots of the display and interact with on-screen elements such as text and icons it will try to use the most direct method to achieve the goal like using spotlight on mac to open applications and using query parameters in the url to open websites with additional information OS mode is a work in progress. If you have any suggestions or experience issues, please reach out to us via Discord, etc. So to enable it, you just literally run the uh, interpreter uh, prompt with the OS flag here, and we'll do that in just a moment. And um, also to, yeah, so it is experimental, and I think it's going to get a lot better over time. And, you know, open interpreter probably won't, definitely won't be the only ones doing stuff like this. Eventually, we'll probably just be able to do, talk a natural language to your computer and it will probably do your work for you right so that's where we're pretty much headed uh you can talk code out an application talk to it just do whatever so um you know set up a marketing campaign all that good stuff so that's definitely the direction we're going you won't have to probably use a mouse or use a keyboard then eventually it'll just read your mind right so anyways so i have a few different tasks i want to try with open interpreter as well before we try the os mode and I personally haven't fully done multiple different tests yet using the OS mode. So you guys will get to see my reaction and you'll get to see this all play out live. Now, from what I believe my thesis before trying is that I think there's going to be certain tasks that would definitely be better without OS mode. Like it says in the docs, it is an experimental, experimental thing. And I don't know if it's fully going to be there yet in terms of something that you would want to use on a day-to-day -day basis. Now we can go ahead and try this and see, but um, the reason, yeah, I don't know how it's going to actually perform. So I'm going to try and sh if for those of you who don't know of an interpreter, open interpreter as well, we're going to run some basic normal open interpreter um, tasks right now, just so you can kind of get the sense of the 
beauty of open interpreter and then we're going to run uh, os mode and see how it actually uh, performs okay so i'm running the normal interpreter uh prompt first without the os flag and then we're going to run the os one afterwards okay so here is the first task in my blank or folder location there are images and random names rename them all uh jpeg and dot png files to follow the format photo um date where the date is the file creation date and xxx is the sequential is a sequential number ensure to maintain the original file extension all right so you'll see here if i go to photos right here this is the folder location as you can see they all have random names let's go ahead and run this okay so it always starts by creating a plan which i do like it's going to list all the files in the directory um so we're just going to say yes Okay, so it's listed all the files now it's going to uh and determine the, their creation dates now we'll proceed with renaming the files accordingly to the specific format okay so it just renamed them now we're going to run this okay so now it just renamed them as you can see instantly it just renamed bulk all these files with photo the data was completed or created and that's pretty cool okay so that was actually a lot quicker than i thought and a lot easier all right so the next prompt is i have a csv file named dummy transactions data.csv in my folder right here containing my bank transactions for the past year analyze this data to show my spending patterns by category id uh, identify my highest expense categories and visualize my expense first uh, income versus expense over time create informative charts and graphs to represent this data and save them all as image files also suggest areas where i could potentially uh, uh, save money based on the analysis let's go ahead and run this okay so it's going to run the code to actually get the data right now okay so now it's going to do the analysis we're going to say yes all right so it said the spending patterns by category chart has been successfully created and saved as spending patterns by category let's take a look Wow, nice. So we got a nice, beautiful chart right here. Uh, we see our expenses on the left and our income on the right and category on the left-hand side, dining, entertainment, groceries, miscellaneous, rent, salary, transport, utilities, and then the total amount here. So pretty cool stuff that it wrote this whole Python script without me doing any code. Now it is going to visualize the income and expenses over time. Okay, so now here is the income versus expenses over time. Wow. So a nice line graph right here. So now it's going to suggest areas to save money. All right, so the summary of the highest expenses category right here. Suggestions for potential savings right here. And then next steps. Um, would you like me to create a summary report with the suggestions for further analysis or any other specific areas? I'm just going to continue on to the next task. All right, now let's go ahead and get to the fun part. I'm going to run interpreter with the OS flag here. Okay, we're going to start with something pretty simple. Like it says right here, in this mode, open interpreter will not require approval before performing actions, so be ready to close this terminal. So if you're running something that could potentially run, you know, commands that could do something to your system, I wouldn't necessarily suggest that and definitely be careful regardless. Um, because yeah, it doesn't ask for your approval. So we're going to start with something simple. We're just going to say open Spotify app. Okay. So it just opened up the Spotify app and we can see right here, there was no error, but the output seems empty. Let's verify whether Spotify app is open or not. I'll take a look and confirm on the screen. So can see here computer display view it just took a screenshot and yeah so it will try a couple different ways as you can see it tried um a first way initially and it didn't work and then it tried a second way and then it worked and now we can see the screenshot confirms that spotify is successfully open and active the request to open the app is complete now you if you need any assistance let me know so now we're going to try another task this time i'm going to say go to youtube and play some relaxing music all right, so this has a little bit more steps involved opposed from just opening up an app. Let's see how it handles this. 
Okay, so it just opened up Chrome here, and it did a search on YouTube for relaxing music. Let's see if it's actually going to pick, pick one. Okay, so it seems like it's kind of get, gone caught up in some sort of loop or glitch right now, where the screenshot hasn't been working, so it's been consistently opening relaxing music again and again in a new tab. All right, I'm having a bit of issues with that one. I think you need to be very specific with your prompts and you're going to probably encounter issues because this definitely isn't perfect. But let's go ahead and kind of be a bit more specific. Go to Google and search the weather today in Toronto. You know, I may even want to say open it up in Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge or whatever the case may be. But let's see how it does with this. Okay, so computer browser search weather today in Toronto. Okay, so this one's actually kind of cool. It actually basically got the weather today. Uh, I guess it may have done a browser search. Uh, so it didn't open it up in the compute in the Chrome. Um, you know, maybe I should have said open it up in Chrome. But it did get the weather today for September 12th um, to be mostly sunny with blah, 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 blah. So let's go ahead and run that same task. And let's say... But well, we did say go to Google, so, but now I'm specifying search this in Google Chrome. Okay, so now it's in Google Chrome at least, and it did search the weather for uh, Toronto, and it should get it with this screenshot, which is the same thing that it just sh said before. Okay, so it looks like I've been encountering a bug in the last couple uh, times here. I don't know if this is... Okay, now it's kind of annoying. So, at least for me, you may encounter some bugs here. It looks like I believe that it's having some issues with the screenshotting now and viewing it. I don't know. Um, we'll try one more. But, um, yeah, like I said, guys, this is definitely not a perfect tool. Like they said on their in their docs, it's in beta. If you're going to actually use this for, you know, day-to-day -day tasks, I wouldn't probably, as of now, recommend the OS mode. I would definitely recommend Open Interpreter either within the chat mode, uh, using it in your, like, Python projects or whatnot. Um, but this is, I think, a glimpse into where we're headed with AI, where it's going to be with AI agents, where they can control your computer, where you're going to be able to talk to them, where they're going to be a companion to you. You know, they're going... To, uh, you know, you'll have Sarah, you'll have Susie, you'll have Jim, whatever the case may be, this this friend, this agent that's going to be able to help you with your day-to-day, -day, your work, your, you know, uh, personal life, whatever the case may be, um, you'll be able to tell them things and they're going to be able to do them on your behalf. And right now, even with this, like, it is cool what they're able to do on a small scale with, like, opening things, controlling things on your computer. Um, it is very slow at the moment. Uh, with OS mode, with normal mode, it's, pr it's pretty good. But um, yeah, I think this is just a glimpse into where we're headed in the next 6 to 12 months. I'd say 6 to 24 months tops. All right, here we're going to say create a new dir uh, directory called test and open it in cursor IDE. I don't know how it's going to do with cursor. Um, maybe easier to say VS Code since it's more maybe known for it. But let's see how it does. Okay, so first things first, it did make the test folder. So that is good. Wow. Okay, so it did open it in cursor IDE. That's awesome. And it looks like the computer vision is actually working because it is taking the screenshots. So that's good. I guess maybe I didn't have a bug. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, you really, I think if you play around with it for a bit longer, it actually is pretty useful that it's doing... Okay, what's going on now? So this is the thing. Sometimes it starts going like this, and I just close it. Just because I don't... When I start seeing it run a bunch of commands or do whatever, you never really know, right? I know it's probably not doing anything harmful, but um, yeah. So it's not perfect by any means, but I think this, like I said, it's a step in the direction where we're headed. And if you want to stay up to date with everything along the lines of AI, automation, 
how you can leverage this in your business and your personal life in whatever way possible to benefit and grow every single day. That's what we're all about on this channel. We upload videos on AI, automation, business growth, marketing, sales, etc. So if you have any other ideas of tools or frameworks or suggestions that you want me to do a video on and topics you want me to cover, let me know in the comments down below, guys. Let me know if you've tried Open Interpreter, what type of use cases and things you've been able to get it to do. Have you tried OS mode? Have you had more success with OS mode than me? Maybe I'm doing something wrong or maybe you, you have some tips, tricks, whatever. Let me know in the comments down below, guys. Other than that, hope you enjoyed this video. Check out our free community, strikecommunity.com, our free Facebook group, free Discord channel. Link in the description down below. Other than that, guys, I will see you in tomorrow's video. Keep hustling, keep grinding, and of course, guys, accelerate your stride. Take care.